Good evening. And on behalf of the Loch Connick Arts Festival, welcome. My name is Robert Burns, but you may also know me as Rabbi, the Bard, and hey you, get your horns off me! <laughs> I am Scotland's greatest son and finest poet, lover of lassies, composer of verse, imbiber of whiskey. In fact, I am familiar with your famous Loch Winnick drinking establishments. As an Ayrshire lad, there's nothing I like more than to hop over the border to Renfrewshire every now and then. That said, I did get into trouble the last time I was in the three churches. Susan says to me, she's like, Ho, oh, Robert Burns, we're no serving you. How no? I says, Cause you're barred. <laughs> so, here we are in 2021. Who'd have thought it, eh? Have we ever seen the like? Getting told to stay in your house for months on end, no allowed to see your family or your pals, no allowed to have a party, no allowed to jet over to Dubai for a jolly. I mean, the basic essentials. Never mind. At least what we can do is curry in in this cold, dark January night, pour ourselves a wee dram and just listen to my greatest hits, my finest stories and songs as told by your local Loch Winnick talent. Loch Winnick, of course, being the jewel in Renfrewshire's crown. Aye, you can take your Kilbarkins and your Kilburnies and your Kilbills Volume 1 and 2. Give me Loch Winnick only day of the week for a wee bit of peace and quiet. Unless you let your dog crap in the street and didn't pick it up and they'll be on to you in the Loch Winnick community chat page. So why don't we huddle in by the fire, pour ourselves a wee dram and just listen to some beautiful poetry and song with a bit of local Loch Winnick flavour. Or to celebrate my birthday. Here's Tayes. Mmm. I'm Pauline Valance and I'm going to sing A Man's A Man, a song that I think has as much relevance today as it did when it was written. Is there for honest poverty that hangs his head and all that the coward slave we pass him by, we dare be poor for all that, for all that, and all that, our toils obscure, and all that, the rank is but the guinea stamp, the man's the goad for all that. Thank you. 
Happy Burns Night, Loch Winnick. O oh, thou that in the heavens dost dwell, O oh, as it pleases best thy cell, Sends e'en to heaven and ten to hell, All oh, for thy glory, And no for when he get her all have done afore thee, I bless and praise thy matchless might, When thousands thou hast left in night, That I am here, before thy sight, for all thy grace, a burning and a shining light to all this place. What was I, or my generation, that I should get sick exaltation? I would deserve most just damnation for broken laws. Six thousand years of my creation through Adam's cause. When fae my mother's womb I fell, Thou micht a plunge me in hell, To gnash my gums in weeping wail and burning lakes, Where damned devils were in jail, Chained to the stakes. But I am here, A chosen sample, To show thy grace is great and ample, I am here, a pillar thy temple, strong as a rock, <coughs> <coughs> a guide, a buckler, and an example to all thy flock. <coughs> <coughs> Thou kens what zeal I bear, When drinkers drink and sweeters swear, And singing there and dancing here with great and small, For I am keep it by thy fear, Fee fit all. But yet, O oh Lord, confess I must, At times I'm fast with fleshy lust, And sometimes tea and worldly trust, Vile self gets in, but thou remembers we are dust, defiled by sin. Lord, just dream thou kens we make. O thy pardon I sincerely beg. O may it never be a loving plague to my dishonour, And I'll ne'er lift a lawless leg again upon her. Besides, a father mon a vow will ease his lass. Three times I trow, but Lord, that Friday, I was fool when I came nearer, or else thou who kens thy servant true would never steer her. Maybe thou lets this fleshy thorn buffet thy servant in the morn, lest he were prudent high should turn that he's so gifted. If see thy hand man in be born, until thou lifted. Lord, bless thy chosen in this place, for here thou hast a chosen race. But God, 
Confound her stubborn face and blast her name. We'll bring thy elders to disgrace and open shame. Lord, mine govern Hamilton's deserts. He drinks and swears and plays at cares. Yet has the money taken hurts with great and small. For God's own priest, the people's hurts he steals a law. And when we chastened him therefore, Thou kings, how he bred, sick as floor, set the wall in a row, laughing at us. Curse thou his basket in his store, kale and potatoes. Lord, hear my earnest cry and prayer against that presbytery I hear. Thy strong right horn, Lord, thy strong right horn, Lord, make it Bear upon the reeds, Lord, visit them, and then he spare for their misdeeds. <coughs> oh, Lord, my God, that glib tongued aching. My very hurt and flesh are quaking to think how I stood, sweetened, shaken, and, and pished with reed, while he with hanging lip and snaking held up his head. Lord, in thy day of vengeance try him. Lord, visit them who did employ him, and pass not in thy mercy by them, nor hear their prayer, but for thy people's sake destroy them. And then he spare. Says temporal and divine, that at for grace and gear may shine itself benign, and all the glory shall be thine. Amen. Amen. Hi. I'm Fran Shopler and I'm going to be singing He Banks and Braves O Bonnie Doon. Ye banks and braves O Bonnie Doon How can ye bloom Say fresh and fair How can ye chant ye and I say weary folk You'll break my heart Ye warbling bird That wanton through the flowery thorn Ye mind me And Ilka bird sang all its love And fondly said it I, oh my With lights on heart I pulled a rose Foo sweet upon its thorny tree 
my false lover stole my rose, but I he left the thorn with me. Hi, we are Heart Fusion. Uh, Dominic Snyder and Claire Robertson and uh, we're going to do uh, Call the Eyes for you. Just 
still may fly them all And though at last they catch them fast Their heads can never enjoy marvellous. In fact, as another literary icon once wrote, doesn't it make you proud to be Scottish? Indeed, I can tell you where I was when I wrote that. I was just coming round after a heavy night in the Ishkabeha, and I looked at the lovely Jean Armour lying there beside me, and I thought, oh Jean, oh Jean, my wife and sweetheart, you're so bonny, you're so very, very bonny. But, we've got nine wains, so I tell you what, why don't I write you a wee poem instead, eh? <laughs> so I was walking round Loch Winnock earlier, and I popped into Sean's the Butcher, you know, to buy some haggis and neeps and tatties, so as to celebrate my birthday. And there was Sean, playing his fiddle, and it fair made me sad remembering those bygone days in the brown bull, all the musicians sitting in the house, the air alive with the sound of music and chatter and laughter and song. Those days will come again, folks. Those days will come again.
Robert Burns was born on the 25th of January, 1759, almost as long ago as some of the teachers, in a village of Alloway in Ayrshire, Scotland. He came from humble beginnings, being born in the modest farmhouse built by his father, William Burness. Robert, or as he's often known, Rabbi Burns, was from a large family and was the eldest of seven siblings. I can only imagine the arguments coming from a family of that size. Robert's family were hardworking and had to warn to earn enough to live. So from an early age, Robert worked in the family farm. His father, however, believed that education was important. So unlike many other children of his time, Robert was taught to read and write. As Robert spent much of his time on the family farm, a lot of his early work was based on what he saw there. For example, two mouse was written after he plowed through a mouse's nest in a field after working on the farm one day. Another one of his early poems to a loose was written after he spotted a louse or head lice on a lady's bonnet in church. Let's just say if he were alive now and after observing our modern day, we can only imagine the things that Burns would have written. Very interesting things. However, much of Burns' inspiration came from being in love. At the young age of 15, he wrote his first love song, and that was to be followed by many more to come. Over the course of his life, Robert had 12 children, one wife, and had declared four loves of his life. Parents' night appointments must have taken forever for a parent of 12 children. Although Robert was a prolific author and wrote many poems and songs, his work was not published until he reached the grand old age of 27. Maybe when our teachers finally reach the age of 27, they will become famous too. Teachers, you can pay me for that joke later. To a mouse. We sleek it, coorn, timorous beastie. Oh, what a panic's in thy breastie. Thou needna start a wassy hasty with wicker and brattle. I would be laith to run and chase thee with murder and paddle. I'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union and justifies that ill opinion which makes thee startle at me, thy poor earth-born companion and fellow mortal. I doubt na whiles, but thou may thieve. What then? Poor beastie thou mun live. A demonicker in a thraves a small request. I'll get a blessing with a lathe and never missed. Thy wee bit hussy too in ruin. It's silly was the winds are strewn and nothing new to beg a new yin or foggage green. And bleak December's winds ensuing both snell and keen. Thou saw the fields laid bare and waste, and weary winter coming fast, and cosy here beneath the blast thou thought to dwell till crash, the cruel cutter passed out through thy cell. That wee bit heap of leaves and stibble has cost thee money a weary nibble. Now there's turned out for all thy trouble, but who's her hauled to thole the winter's sleety drizzle and cranruch called. But Mousy, thou art no thy lane, in proving foresight may be vain. The best laid schemes of mice and men gang after glee. And lay us not but grief and pain for promised joy. Still thou art blessed compared with me. The present only toucheth thee. But oh, I backward cast my e on prospect drear. And forward though I canna see, I guess. And fear.
Farewell, the stream that winding flows around Eliza's dwelling. O oh, memory, spare the cruel throes within my bosom swelling. Condemned to drag a hopeless chain and yet in secret languish to feel a fire in every vein, nor dare disclose my anguish. Love's various wretch, unseen, unknown, I fain my griefs would cover, the bursting sigh, the unweeting groan, betray the hapless lover. I know thou doomst me to despair, no wilt nor canst relieve me, but oh, Elizer, hear one prayer, for pity's sake, forgive me. The music of thy voice I heard, no wist while it enslaved me. I saw thine eyes, yet nothing feared, till fears no more had saved me. The wary sailor thus aghast, the wheeling torrent viewing, mid circling horror sinks at last. Last in overwhelming ruin, in overwhelming ruin. My love is like. Red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. My heart is like a melody so sweetly played in tune. And fair at though my body lies, so deep in love am I. And I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas gang dry. Till all the seas gang dry, my dear, and rocks melt with the sun. And I shall love thee still, my dear. Though sands of time shall run And fare thee will my only love Fare thee will a while And I will come again, my dear Though it were ten thousand miles Fifa, your honest sonsy face, great chieftain o the puddin' race, aboon the ma ye tak your place, pinch tripe o' therm, weel are thee worthy of a grace as long as my arm. The groaning trencher, there ye fell, ye hurdies, like a distant mill, your pen would help to mend the mill in time o' need. While through the pores the juice distill like amber bead. His knife, see rustic, labour diet, and cut you up with ready slight, trenching your gushing entrails bright, 
like honey ditch. And then, oh, what a glorious sight. Warm, reeking, rich. Mm. Then horn for horn, they stretch and strive. Do you tap the hindmost on they drive? Till all the wheel swell kites believe are bent like drums. The old goodman must like the drive, be thank it hums. <coughs> Is there that ah, his French ragout, or olio that would style a sou, or fricassee would mark a spew with perfect scunner, looks down with sneer and scorn for view on sick at dinner. Poor devil see him o'er his trash, as feckless as a withered rash, his spindle shank, a good whiplash, his neither knit through bloody field or field to dash, oh how unfit. But mark the rustic haggis fed. The trembling earth resounds his tread. Clap in his wally, neither blade. He'll mock it whistle. And legs and arms and heads will sned like taps of thristle. You pause what mark mankind your care and dish him out their bill of fare. Old Scotland once snee skinking wear that jopes in luggies. But if you wish her grateful fare, give her a haggis. Thank you. Wasn't that beautiful? The lilting cadences, the rolling vowels, the beautiful Scots language that, admit it, you had to look it up in a dictionary to understand your rages. <laughs> Little did I know, though, that people would be reciting that nearly 250 years after I wrote it. I mean, why me? Perhaps uh, Scotland sees some of itself in me. A drinker, a rebel, a chancer, a rogue. A mason. In fact, the last time I was in Loch Winnock, I did bop into the lodge to see some of my old pals. I was amazed to see pictures of myself all there there was. Although, on closer inspection, some of them did turn out to be Scottish referees. <laughs> anyway, let's enjoy another one of my greatest hits. Close your eyes and let yourself tumble back in time, back to the 18th century. That's right, folks, you're in the corner bar. <laughs> Slange. Hi, I'm Molly McKeever, and I'm with my dad, Graham McKeever, and we're going to sing My Love is Like a Red, Red Rose. Ready? <laughs> Are you ready? I think so. <laughs>
summertime is near And the trees are sweetly blooming And the wild mountain thyme Rolls around the blooming heather Will you go, lassie, go? And we'll all go home together To pluck wild mountain thyme All around the blooming heather I will build my love a bower by young clear and crystal fountain and all around the bower grows all the flowers of the mountain will you go lassie go and we'll all go home together to pluck wild mountain time all around the blooming Style. In a traditional style, oh, oh. in a traditional style, in a traditional style. If my true love she will not come, I must surely find another to pluck wild mountain time all around the blooming heather. Will you go, Lassie? Go. And we'll all go home together To pluck wild mountain time All around the blooming heather Will you go, lassie, go And we'll all go home together To pluck wild mountain time All around the blooming heather Will you go, lassie, go Style. In a traditional style, from Galway to Glasgow, in a traditional style. In a traditional, Mongo Cypher, in a traditional style. Oh, oh. Lament of Mary, Queen of Scots, on the approach of spring. Now, Nature hangs her mantle green on every blooming tree and spreads her sheets of daisies white or the grassy lay. Now Phoebus cheers the crystal streams and glads the azure skies, but not can glad the weary white that fast endurance lies. Now love rocks wake the merry morn aloft on dewy wing, the merrill in his noontide bower makes woodland echoes ring. The nearest wild when Monia note sings drowsy days to rest. And love and freedom, they rejoice. We care nor thrall oppressed. Now blooms the lily by the bank, the primrose down the prey. The hawthorn's budding in the glen and milk white as the sleigh. The meanest hind in fair Scotland may rove their sweets among. But I, the queen of all Scotland, one lion prison strang. I was the queen of bonny France, where happy I have been. Full lightly raise I in the morn as blithely down at e'en. And I'm the sovereign of Scotland, and mony a traitor there. Yet here I lie in foreign bands and never ending care. But as for thee, thou false woman, my sister, and my foe, grim vengeance yet shall wet a sword that through thy soul shall go. The weeping blood in women's breast was never known to thee, nor the balm that drops on winds of woe frae women's pity and ee. My son, my son, may kinder stars upon thy fortune shine. And may those pleasures gild thy reign that ne'er would blink on mine. God keep thee from thy mother's foes, or turn their hearts to thee. And where thou meet'st thy mother's friend, 
remember him from me. Oh, soon to me, my summer sun's nae mair light up the morn. Nae mair to me, the autumn winds wave o'er the yellow corn. And in the narrow house of death, let winter round me wreath for the next flowers that deck the spring and bloom on my peaceful grave. Oh, that one fair makes me greet. It fair makes me nostalgic for the glory days and when I'd be hanging round the back of the library with my pals, having a wee schwally and listening to the chimes of old Simon in the distance. Now, I have heard there is another bard round these parts, a woman, no less. Every war I go in Loch Winnock, I see her name. At the top of John's Hill, there's her poetry. The Loch Winnock train station, there's her poetry. The Chatterbox, there's her poetry. Right next to her advert for dog grooming services and the McGill's bus timetable. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the local poet with all the special verses. The poetess with the moestess. The bard of Renfrewshire. The inheritor of my legacy. Please give it up. For the one and only, Miss Betty McKellar. John Anderson, my Joe. John Anderson, my Joe, John. When we were first acquaint, your locks were like the raven, your bonny brew was brent. But now your brew is belled, John, and your locks are like the snow. But blessings on your frosty pow, John Anderson, my Joe. John Anderson, my Joe, John, we climbed the hills together. And money a canty day, John, we had we in another. No woman taught her doon, John, but hand in hand we'll go and sleep together at the foot. John Anderson, my Joe. Now, as I said to you before, I used to travel the length and breadth of Scotland. I've been everywhere, even Falkirk. But there's one place I have never been, the beautiful islands of Orkney where the nights are long and the standing stones are tall. It is an enchanted place, and many a tale I heard of selkies and bogles, fairies and demons, all sorts of weird and wonderful creatures that emerge from the cold, dark nights. They have a musical heritage there that is second to none, matched perhaps only by the Three Churches' summer jam. Now, I want us to welcome an act that has come from that far afield. Three young lasses and a guy who are sharing with us their beautiful musical cadences, their lilting vocals, their spellbinding fiddles. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the beautiful sound of Farah. We're going to play you a set of tunes called The Deplection. And that takes its name from the first tune in the set. We'll follow that with a quote and number by Katrina, Gina, myself, and our former pianist, Jen Austin. We got together in a wee room up in the Highlands uh, a few years ago and wrote this one. So I've started to introduce it um, because recently on gigs, Gina's unfortunately just got a wee bit tongue tied and um, started to dedicate it to me. And it's called My Favourite Cow. So that's purely by accident, of course. And uh, we'll finish the set with a fantastic tune by Katrina, which is called Farewell to the Prid. So hope you enjoy them. <laughs>
Burns wrote some beautiful lyrical poetry and songs and many tunes. And today we're going to do a poem for you which we set to music. It's called Spear Through the Last Wind and it was written by a lady from Kirkwall called Christina Costi. It's in Arcadian dialect and it has a theme that is very similar to many of Burns's great works. Um, yeah, so to spear someone in Arcadian dialect is to ask them a question. And in this poem, the young girl, she's her boyfriend is up and gone and she doesn't know where he is. And she is sick and tired of people asking her, where's Johnny? When's he coming home? And she just decides, instead of replying to them with a the normal answer of, I don't know, she goes, spear though the west wind, which is her saying, ask the wind, but don't ask me. I hope you enjoy it. Port Polka set and this is a set of three tunes. The first two were co-written by the whole band and we start with the Port Polka and then go into Ronald Rich and then we'll finish this set with a tune by Kristen and it's called The Shore. So hope you enjoy this one.
sadly passed away. It is believed from a fever on the 21st of July 1796 at the young age of 37 years old. His funeral took place on the 25th of July 1796. A few years after his death, some friends of Burns gathered together to share some of his poems and songs and the Burns Supper was born. Today Burns Night is celebrated all around the world on the 25th of January. This year on the 25th of January, Ravi would have been 225. At the end of a burn supper and in Hogmanay celebrations all over the world, people often sing a song based on one of Burns most famous works, Old Lang Syne, as they celebrate time spent with friends. This year we may not be able to have the usual Burns Night celebrations and therefore Burns life and work is being celebrated instead in small family groups or on Zoom calls with others, all from the comfort of our own living rooms. The words of Old Lang Syne are especially poignant this year. Many will have said good words in 2020. I know I'm glad to see the back of it, and I'm sure you are too. If we study the words of the song closer, we realise that Rabbi Burns talks of friendship, kindness, running about the countryside, paddling in the stream, and sharing drinks with friends. Simple pleasures in life, some of which have been temporarily taken away from us at present. I'm sure that adults here will look forward to celebrating in the pub with their friends when this is all over. Rabbi Burns is arguably one of the most influential poets Scott has ever seen, so we really enjoyed learning about his life and work this January. And we have loved celebrating his life with poetry, song and laughter. Thank you all for listening to our immortal memory, celebrating the life and work of a very important man. And may we now ask you all to raise your iron brew and toast. To Robert Rabbit Burns. Oh. Hiya, I'm Odie Smith. This is Crawford Smith. All right. Mac Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put on my best Scottish accent for this. <laughs> and I'll try my best not to laugh. <laughs> uh, happy Bonds night, everybody. Slide your van. Thank you. 
Since days of old, I sing.